again I remember standing at my daddy's bedside And the tears filled up the wrinkle on his face As I held his withered hand he smiled and whispered Take your Bibles, if you would, turn to the book of Luke, Luke chapter number eight. As you're finding your place, please be much in prayer for the uh, Marion Bennett family. Brother Marion went home to be with the Lord last night, and I'm sure his wife would appreciate your prayers. He's a... Uh, we went to school together at Stockton Tech, and uh, he was he was a country feller now. That's all I can tell you. We'd be out playing ball. He had a little car, or a little truck, or something, and probably he had made it out of something, knowing Mary. And he'd be down in the dirt, boom, boom, boom. so I knew what he was going to be when he got old. And he was a potwooder and all that, and nothing wrong with that, but. Uh, as far as I know, he never hurt nobody or done evil toward anybody. But be much in prayer for his family. In Luke chapter number eight, and I'm going to tell you now, I'm not going to finish the message this morning. It's too long, and I, but I'll finish it tonight. I want to cover the whole chapter, and there's no way, no way. So I'll cover about half of it this morning, and hopefully you can be with us this evening and get the dessert. See, you always eat the dessert at the end of the meal. Most people do, I don't. If I can get to the dessert table, I'll eat it first and uh, get that over with. But let's start reading, if we could, in the very first verse of Luke chapter number eight. And it came to pass afterward that he went throughout every city, talking about Christ, and village, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. That's the twelve disciples. And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils, 
and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod Stewart, and Susanna, and many others, which ministered unto him of their substance. And when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city, he spake by a parable. A parable, Jesus spoke many of them in the scriptures, is like telling a, mm, a story, not that it isn't true, but telling something to help people to see, we call them, preachers do, illustrations, which could be parables. So it, I'm not saying it isn't true, but uh, a lot of times all it's doing is pa uh, painting a picture. And this particular parable, starting in the fifth verse, says a sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. And it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon a rock. And as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And other fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit and hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, he that hath an ear, let him hear. This whole chapter has to do with faith. And he mentions seven times in this parable and down below it where he explains the parable. He mentions seven times, if I counted right, it might be more, uh, of hearing. God's been good to me and you and gave us two ears to hear. And He's going to explain the parable to them because the disciples did not understand what he was talking about. Much less the people that had came to him out of every city. If you notice in the beginning of those verses, it said he went into the cities and went into every city of preaching and teaching. Now they have followed him outside of the city. And those people, in my opinion, did not follow him outside the city to hear what he was saying. They followed him to see what he was going to do because he was known in those days as the, uh, the man that could uh, perform and did perform miracles on people. And you're going to see that tonight in the latter part of this chapter, how he performed miracles. And uh, they wanted to see that. People today are still anxious to see something that, you know, it's a miracle. It's a miracle. Well, you can put that terminology on most anything you want to. It does not make it a miracle. Amen. Uh, somebody said, well, it's a miracle Georgia won. Well, you can put that on that, that, that deal, but I'm not sure God had anything to do with that ball game. Well, I'm making friends. Now, I'm thankful they won. Don't get me wrong. And I don't think there's anything wrong with praying before you play a football game or baseball or whatever. There's nothing wrong with that. But uh, I'm not so sure you're going to influence God to help you to be something you ain't in order to win. Well, I'm making friends. But anyhow, here's the title, okay? My title for all this. The sower, the seed, and the soil. Those three things are going to be in this parable. There's a sower. That sower is none other than Jesus Christ. He's the one he's referring to himself, how he's sowing and how the, the word of God is the seed, how that seed fell on different hearts. The soil represents different hearts. And we'll cover that in this morning and try to see that, how these seed not all fell on a good heart. Not everybody that comes to hear a preacher or be in Sunday school class or whatever are going to hear like somebody else hears. Not that they don't have ears, but because he said, he that hath an ear, let him hear. Over in the book of Revelation in the second and third chapter, where he's speaking to the seven churches and he starts with the church at Ephesus and he winds up with the church in Laodicea. And he tells every one of them, in the letter he wrote to them in that second and third chapter, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. So 
We have our ears tuned too many times. And I'm speaking from experience. Too many times people come to church all loaded down with whatever, you know, and they don't hear. I'm not saying any of you are deaf. I'm hard of hearing. That, that works to my benefit a lot of times because I just tell my wife, I didn't hear you. I didn't hear that. I didn't agree to that. I didn't hear it. But you have to come to church. You have to come to Sunday school with ears that are ready and anxious and want to hear. Because if you don't, it's going to be mighty boring in here. If it don't, you'll have a chance to go to sleep probably if you want to. But if you're tuned in and you want to hear the truth, then tune it in. The sower is Jesus. He's the master sower. You and I that know the Lord is our Savior, hey, we can be sowers. And we should be sowers. Amen right there, Christ. Amen. Does that Jesus is the sower in the parable though. He's talking about himself. But the seed is the word of God. Amen. The precious, holy, wonderful word of God. The inspired word of God. The Bible is a book that is, doesn't have any errors in it. It doesn't have any contradictions in it. Amen. If you're looking for a perfect book, then read your Bible. Study your Bible and you've got a perfect book. The precious, holy, wonderful word of God. The soul represents the different people's heart. Not everybody has the same heart. And he sowed the seed and as he started out sowing the seed, some of it fell by the wayside. Some of it didn't, didn't fall where we intend for it to fall. Amen. It fell by the wayside. And he explains all this to you and I as he explains the parable in the 10th verse, 11th verse, excuse me. He said, now this parable is this. The seed's the word of God. Now those by the wayside are those that hear. Oh, well, there's a sound there. You, you'd have to wear, there's a pair of earmuffs back there on the, on the back where we hang our hats. And I told somebody, somebody come to church and didn't want to hear what I say. So they, they brought the earmuffs. So you're welcome to pick them up right now if you like. And, and uh, you might not want to hear what I hear. But uh, those by the wayside are those that hear. But time they hear, the devil comes. Is that your earmuffs? I knew you didn't want to hear I knew I knew what you. I had to pick at her. She go to sleep on me. But <laughs> time they hear something distracts them, and that's the devil getting quiet in here again. Distracts them, and they don't get it. Amen. If I get around a lot of people two or three or four or five, standing in a wad, so to speak, a group, and all of them are talking at one time, I don't get it. I, I used to could, but my hearing is so bad now, I don't. I have to, or more or less, I have to look at a person and watch their lips. I can't read lips, but I, you know, it helps to watch them to know they are talking. And I had to look at them before I understand what they're saying. If I'm looking this way and you're back here talking to me, I hope you don't think I'm being rude. I'm not. I don't hear you. You said, why don't you get an ear aid? Ear aid. Yeah, hearing aid. <laughs> well, I went and tested and they told me I needed one. And if you'll give me $5,000, I'll buy one. It might be worth 5000 to you. Amen. So I could hear you when you complain or whatever. Amen. I got it on the, yeah, yeah, might get 5,000 here. But anyhow, they heard, but as soon as they heard, somebody snatched it away. Somebody coughed. Somebody sneezed. Somebody came in the door. 
Somebody went out the door. Somebody had to go to the bathroom. I'm not, hey, you got to go to the bathroom, you go. I'm not discouraging that, okay? But just little things. It doesn't take a big thing to distract me and you and get our attention where we're not hearing what's being said. Or if we heard it, it flew away. Oh, I wonder why they're late. I wonder why they didn't get here early. I wonder why. You know, some people come to church and see who ain't here. You didn't know that. It's the truth. Thank God for who's here. Jesus said, where two or more gather together, I'll be there in the midst. Thank God me and Naomi makes two. Well, we're a little over two. I'm a little overweight. Just, just a little bit. But the first seed that was sown, and you're going to see this. Let me give you some pointers. Put in your notes. Every one of them heard the same thing. Every one of them heard. Jesus is speaking to them, the disciples, and he's also speaking to the multitude that is there, or the people trying to teach them. They all heard the message. He didn't give one message for the elite and another message for the middle class and another message for the poor people. No, he gave one message and that seed was sown. The word of God was put out there. The same word of God on all of them. They all heard the same thing. But let me go ahead. I'm getting ahead of myself. They didn't, but one of them, one of the grounds, which one of the hearts, Produce fruit. The other three didn't. So the one that fell by the wayside, they heard. By the time they heard, something got their attention. Something caused their mind to get off the subject. And the devil stole it. The devil's here every time you come. And he don't... <laughs> Okay. It ain't me. <laughs> it, and it ain't you. You're not a devil. But he doesn't miss church, I promise you. Amen. And the purpose of me and you coming to church is here. It's to hear. It's not to see. I mean, you all look good to me. Amen. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I know I wear glasses, but I can see you. Without these, I just can't read without. And I got large print, I'm sure. I mean, I see me put them on and off. But anyhow, the first ground, <laughs> the, the, the seed landed on the, by the wayside. Now, you come down to the second soil, and it's down in the 13th verse. And it's talking about those that was sown, the word of God was sown. Here, this group, this heart, when they heard the word of God, they received it. They didn't doubt it. They received the word of God with joy. It brought a little joy in their in the house and the life. But they have no root. Amen. They have no root. It never took root. So therefore, it produces no fruit. You got to come back tonight. I, I can't give you everything that God's given me this week on this. But you're not going to produce anything. They enjoyed the message. Some people, that's the reason I don't stand at the back door. A lot of preachers do. That's fine. I'm not criticizing them. I just don't want to make some of you lie. I enjoyed that preacher. And I won't see you in the morning to Easter. Uh, you must not have enjoyed it too good. Amen. Or that was a blessing, preacher. Well, we'll, we'll play it again tonight. Amen. We still have services at night. I know a lot of churches are stopping it. That's their business. That's their doing. But as long as you let me be your pastor, and as long as you help me to be your pastor, amen, I want to be back tonight. 
I'm going home in a little while. I don't know what's on the menu at my house today, but I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat. Yes, sir. If I have to get in the freezer and get that snicker ice cream, I'm going to eat. I don't have but one or two weaknesses, and one of them's ice cream, and the other is snicker bars. But I'm going to eat, and then I'm going to come back to church tonight. When I get through tonight, I'm going home, Lord willing. Guess what I'm going to do again? I'm going to eat. And if I wake up in the nighttime around 3 o'clock, I get me a bowl of ice cream. It's like a sedative. It helps you to sleep. Amen. I'm going to eat again. There ain't no such thing as me as eating once. I'm going to eat more than once as long as I'm living and able to do it. And, uh, of course, it shows up, and I'm proud of every pound. Amen. But you can hear and have joy over what you heard. But there's got to be a growth in there to produce the roots. Amen. And unless you take time, and put in the effort to fertilize the seed, so to speak, to water the seed, so to speak, with this here, the Word of God, it's not going to grow. And uh, the greatest test of your salvation is not how pretty you are, how much this you, that you are. The greatest test of your salvation is your fruitfulness. Your fruitfulness. You're welcome. So some fell by the wayside. Some fell on the rock. The next seed, the next heart we want to look at for just a moment. Some fell amongst thorns. Look down with me if you would. In the 14th verse it says some, that which fell among thorns, are they which they, they heard. They heard, they went to church, or somebody witnessed to them on the job, or at school, or somewhere, at the convenience store, wherever it might be, some people said something to them about the Lord. Amen. And they heard. And they, but it says, they go forth and are choked. Guess what chokes them? the cares and riches and pleasures of this life. Some people come to church, they'll hear, but the whole time, and I, I'm speaking from experience, I was born and raised in this church. And uh, my mama, you went to church, whether you liked it or not. You didn't get off the hook, but you was going to church. And I sat back there as a teenager, as a young man, and the preacher, I don't know what he preached. I heard, but I couldn't tell you what he preached. Because you know what I was doing back there? I knocked off that, didn't I? We was fishing to go play baseball. The Stockton Billy Goats I played for, Smitty played for. We said, you go play baseball. We played every Sunday. We'd go to Waycross. We'd go to Moultrie. We went everywhere playing baseball. That was our life. We grew up without television. We grew up without cell phones. We grew up without daddy having a car we could tear up. We grew up without no telephone in the house. No running water in the house. Only way to be running water, you get a bucket full of water and run through the house. <laughs> but there wasn't no running water. You said, well, you, uh, that's so bad. Uh oh, that was good. I know which end of the mule to hook the plow to. That's right. Amen. Amen. And I know peanuts don't grow on trees. <laughs> but I sat back there, me and some others, and we just come out of Miss Nan's Sunday school class. And buddy, she put it on you. And we needed it, Brother Dennis. We needed it bad. And she knew that. 
But I sat back there worrying about that ball game. I wonder who they're going to pitch, the left-hander or the right-hander. I'd rather bat against the left-hander because I hit right-handed. What little bit I hit. And I wonder which position he's going to play me in. Am I going to be in left field, right field, first base? If Dale was pitching, I had to play first base. And the whole service, oh, I heard. But the cares of the world. I'm not going to ask you to testify or anything, but what are you so worried about this morning that would rob you of hearing what the Word of God says? Hmm. So we've had three of them now. Some fell by the wayside. They heard. Some fell on the rock. They heard. Some fell upon thorns amongst thorns and got choked out. They heard. They all heard the same thing. But no fruit. Then we come to the last one, which calls good ground. We come to that one that is hungry to know the truth. My pastor, Brother Steve Ward, or Dr. Steve Ward, over at Victory Baptist Church in Valosta, I led him to the Lord when he was a young man, him and his wife. They were living in a little old bitty trailer. I don't ever forget it. And when he got saved and I baptized him and baptized his wife, and we lived, we just built a brand new pastorium back behind the church in the field back there. And after every service, and he drove a bus on Sunday morning. When he come back with that bus, here come him and his wife and two little girls. Of course, they was welcome at my house. Don't get me wrong. But we fed them more peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I thought that would keep them from coming, but it did because he was hungry. There was some good ground there. He wanted to know more. He'd keep me up all night if I let him with Bible questions. The seed found good ground and he wanted to know more. And he bore fruit. Now he's my pastor and doing a great job Amen. in a great church. Amen. Four different types of hearts in the church. Some hear and the devil snatches it away. Don't let him do that. Tell him to get behind you. That's what the Bible says. Amen. It says to resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Of course, you better do what it says right before that verse. Draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. Amen. Then you resist the devil and he'll flee from you. You don't have to argue with him. You don't have to punch him. Amen. Jesus was tempted of him and Jesus just said it is written and finally the devil had to flee be careful all three the first three rather of the Bible New Testament has this parable in it and every one of them listen they end it with a little saying. Here in Luke, I'll tell you, well, let's start with Matthew. I'd rather start there than Luke. In Matthew, it says, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Before you come to church, before you go to Bible study, before you, uh, anything, Sunday school or whatever it is, hey, clean your ears out. Let them ears hear. Don't, don't come. <laughs> it tickles me sometimes. Don't come to see or find something wrong. You won't have to look far here to find something wrong. Because I'm before you more than anyone else. You can find something wrong in a hurry. I mean, some of my English might not be too good. I mean, 
I love Nanner sandwiches. And I love Mater sandwiches. And I love Nanner pudding. Amen. And some things just get gooder sometimes. So that's not good English, youngest. But it's all right. <laughs> Amen. Come wanting something. Amen. Matthew said, he that hath ears, or who hath ears, let him hear. In the Gospel of Mark, when he ends this parable, he says, take heed what you hear. You ought to be ticky about your hearing. Amen. I have told people this, not being ugly, but you can get enough of anything. But I don't want to hear what's wrong with somebody else. And I refuse to let my ears be garbage cans. I'm ticky about what I hear. There's certain preachers, some of them well-known probably, I will not listen to. I'm not going to name them. That's between me and me and me. Amen. But I'm ticky about what I hear. I'm ticky about what book I read. Amen. I have a library, but there's some of those books I wouldn't give to a hound dog. Well, why don't you burn them or something? I might do that when I have a burning around here. Amen. Because when I die, somebody might get them and think they're all all right. But I've been tricked in, uh, not tricked, but led to buy some things that ain't worth hearing. But take heed to what you hear. Then here in Luke, in that 18th verse, he said, take heed how you hear. See the difference? He tells them, if you have ears to hear, let him hear. The only reason God gave you ears is to hear. It doesn't beautify you a bit. They're there to hear with. Amen. Then he says, <laughs> take heed to what you hear. There's some things you ought to turn off. Amen. There's some music I don't want to hear. There's some music I'm not going to listen to. Amen. But there are some music, songs, that I love, and I love to hear. And that's what I listen to. If you get my car, my radio, whichever one, it won't be on certain stations. It's on one station, and if you change it, I'll break your arm. <laughs> I don't want to hear that. Uh, I've got 10 wonderful grandchildren, and they all, well, they got one or two are still uh, in their teens. But when they ride to me, they hear my music. Whether it be on a CD or where it be coming through the radio. I, I'm just not, I'm, I'm just not hip, okay? I'm just not cool to hear some things. Now, last but not least, you ought to take heed how you hear. Did you come to hear this morning? Well, that's what this parable is all about. And I'll share that with you this evening. <laughs> and some of you are going to be surprised. But you can't hear if you're not careful. Or you'll make something out of something that isn't if you're not careful. May your heart be good ground. And if your heart's good ground and the seed is sown, you will have fruit. Amen. He ends this parable. I'm going to go over into tonight just a hair. He ends this parable with a saying that I wrestled with when I was studying this. But he talks about a candle and lighting a candle. And I said, that doesn't fit, Lord. That doesn't fit what the Bible's talking about, hearing and having fruit. 
Could I go ahead and say this to you in closing? If you've got real faith, you can't hide it. Man lit that candle. And he said, do you light a candle and put it under something? Or do you put it under the bed? Or do you put it on the candlestick? A candlestick in your Bible, Smitty, if you go to Revelation, the first chapter represents the church. Read the first chapter of Revelation, you'll find it. The seven stars there he talks about are the seven angels of the church, which represent the pastors of the church. Not that a pastor's an angel, okay? No way. But he talks about a candlestick there. And he goes on and says in the Revelation, in the first chapter, that that candlestick is a church. Whatever you're going to, God, let me put it this way. Whatever God's going to lead me or you to do for the glory of God has to be done through the local church. God's not in the Hoot Owl Club and any other club to get his work done. God works solamente or solely, excuse the Spanish, solely through, <laughs> you're laughing, through the church. He doesn't work through this and that and the other. God, the church, is the bride of Jesus Christ and he has a relationship with that church. Amen. To bear fruit. Amen. It's clear as mud, ain't it? But I'll try to clear most of it up tonight. And I'm sorry, I don't usually do this. You people uh, seeing live, I'm sorry. Tune in again tonight is all I can tell you. And... Uh, We'll try to put the icing on the cake. But what kind of heart? I had to question myself. What kind of heart do I have? Is the seed landing by the wayside? Or is the seed landing on the rock? Or is the seed landing amongst thorns? Now, if there's anybody in this auditorium that could have something, and I'm guilty, have something that I'm so focused on that I don't hear really what the Lord is saying, it would be me. You say, why? Because I got a whole big old family that I'm responsible for. You didn't know that? Read the book of Hebrews, the last chapter, please. And I've got to give an account for you to God. That's what the book says. Now, I'd rather not have that responsibility. But being called to God and placed in the church as a pastor, can you imagine me giving account for them girls there? They're good youngins. I don't know about that. Maybe they are. We're working on it. Let's put it that way. But I can get so caught up looking around. I know where everybody's supposed to sit. I know where you sit every week. And I can get caught up and start calling names of people that aren't here this morning with the cares of the world and not get what I'm supposed to get from the seat. Amen. Let's stand to our feet, please. Our Father, we're thankful to be in your house on this First Sunday of a new year, Father. Thank you for the people who've turned aside and come this way. I've tried, Lord, I know it's been a feeble effort, but I've tried to bring what you've placed on my heart with the understanding that I'll try to complete it tonight. But I pray that you'll bless it, the seed that's been sown here today, that, Lord, it would find good ground and it would produce fruit. And I pray if there's one here in this building that doesn't know thee, that the seed has maybe been heard more than once, but so far it hasn't landed on good ground. May they open their heart and invite the seed to fall on good ground before it's eternally late, too late, Father. So bless, have your way. If there's one here that's wrestling with something, may they come 
and just kneel at the cross and get it all settled, Father. May they cast their care upon you for knowing that you care for them, Father. So whatever the need is, we know you're able, you're sufficient, you're the almighty one, and you can take care of it. May they cast it upon thee. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. Amen. What number, Brother B? 176. 176, as we sing together, if I could pray with you, talk with you, whatever, I'd be honored.